Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so today we're going to talk about something called Bayes' Theorem. But before we do that, um, I just want to review uh, what we learned before about conditional probability. So remember we said that the probability of A and B happening is the probability of A happening times, or and, the probability of B happening given that A has already happened. Okay? And we can also then say that the probability of B given A happens is we can just isolate by dividing by P A. So that's A intersect B over A. Right? So the probability of B given A happens is A and B over A. Okay? So we're going to use this. Um, to talk about the idea that if there's two events happening, A and B, with certain outcomes, and we want B to happen, it could happen either with A or without A. Okay, so in terms of a tree diagram, okay, the first event is A, either it happens or it doesn't, and then the second event is B, either it happens or it doesn't, but also down here. B happens or B doesn't. Okay? So what that means that is that if we want B to happen, both this is an option and this is an option if we want B to happen. Right? So this would then be so the probability of B actually happening is going to be the probability that A happens and probability that B happens, right? Or we could have A not happen and then B happen, right? So this is what we're trying to get at. Okay, so now let's see an example that'll make a lot more sense. Okay. So Anusa golfs well in good weather 60% of the time, and in windy weather, he only golfs well 25% of the time. True story. If there's a 35% chance of wind tomorrow, what's the probability that Anusa is going to golf well? Okay. Either it's windy or not, that's event one, and then either Anusa golfs well or not, that's event two. Okay, so we're going to make a um, tree diagram, and we're going to say, well, it's either windy or it's not windy. That's the first thing that has to be decided, because me golfing depends on whether it's windy or not, right? So windy, um, there's a 35% chance, so 0.35, and that means that not windy is point, um 6, 5, right? And then if it's windy, I may golf well, or I may not, right? And if it's not windy, I may golf well, and I may not. So if it's windy, I'll golf well 25% of the time, which means that I'll golf badly 75% of the time. And if it's not windy, then I'll golf well 60% of the time, which means I'll golf badly 40% of the time. Okay, so what we're looking for is what's the probability that the new sick will golf well? Right? So we know that it's going to be windy. Uh, oh no, sorry, we don't know if it's going to be windy or not. And I want to know what's the probability that a new sick golfs well? Okay, well, if we just look at our tree diagram, I could either golf well with it being windy, or I could golf well with it being not windy, right? So both of these are legitimate paths, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to here calculate 0.35 and 0.25, which ends up being 0 0.0875, right? And down here, I'll calculate no wind, 
so 0 0.65, and me golfing well, 0 0.6, which ends up being 0 0.39. Therefore, the probability of me golfing well is, well, and of course, me golfing well is given by probability of g, right? So I could either golf well with the wind, which is 0 0.0875, or I could golf well um, without the wind, so 0 0.39. And that total ends up being 0 0.4775, which means that Anusik has a 47.75% chance of golfing well. Okay, so here we use that idea that I could either golf well with the wind or I could golf well without the wind, right? So we got to add up both options, okay? So here's another example. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, so 8% of people end up with liver disease. And of these people, so right away we can see that there's that event of either you have liver disease or not. And of these people which means of the people with liver disease, 30% are heavy drinkers and 70% aren't, okay? So right away we can see that we can set up a tree diagram that has people with liver disease or with no liver disease. So this will be 8% and this will be 92%, right? And of the people with liver disease, 30% are heavy drinkers. So that means that 30% are heavy drinkers and 70% are not heavy drinkers, right? And of the other people, um, so of the people, when, of the 92% with no liver disease, 5% are heavy drinkers and um, that means that 95 are not, okay? Now, we want to know what's the probability that a heavy drinker will end up with liver disease, okay? So now this is a very tricky part, okay? So what we're looking for is the probability that a heavy drinker will end up with liver disease. I want the probability that somebody's going to have liver disease given that they're a heavy drinker, okay? So I want liver disease given heavy drinker, okay? Well, remember what that means. That means that I want the probability that they're, they have liver disease and they're a heavy drinker over the probability that they're a heavy drinker, right? Well, let's think back to the last example, and you could be a heavy drinker with liver disease, or you could be a heavy drinker without liver disease, okay? So let's figure out those probabilities. So this will be 0.08 times 0.3, and that'll give us 0.024. And this one here will be uh, 0.92 times 0.05, which will be point, uh, 0.0475, okay? So now what we're looking for is the probability that somebody has liver disease and they drink a lot, well, that's right here, right? That's liver disease and drinks a lot. So that's 0 0.024. And here I want somebody having liver disease, which means either you could have liver disease um, sorry, I want somebody to, to be a heavy, so and here I want somebody who's a heavy drinker, which means you could either be a heavy drinker and have liver disease or be a heavy drinker and not have liver disease. So this is going to be 0 0.024 plus 0 0.0475, okay? And what that works out to is 0.3357, which is 33.57. So what we've just figured out is that if somebody is a heavy drinker, 
the probability that they'll end up with liver disease is actually 33%. And that 33% doesn't show up anywhere here, but that really is the most important statistic. Heavy drinker will end up with liver disease 33% of the time. All right, so try that homework, and I'll see you guys in class.